Hey everyone and welcome back to another video. Thank you so much for the absolutely lovely response on my last video. It was incredibly overwhelming and lovely to see. So thank you so, so much. Today I'm gonna to be taking you through another painting that I'm doing, a new painting. And this time we're gonna be using acrylics and I'm gonna be doing another painting in a series that you might have seen me post quite a bit over on my Instagram or on my website. And these are kind of like cartoony abstract animals that I've been really enjoying painting recently. So we have some mixed media pa paper that I'm gonna be working on because I'm gonna be using a lot of acrylics, um, a little bit of pencil, some Posca pens, and this paper just holds up quite well with the medium. Um, it's it's okay because these aren't my best paintings, but they're, they're all right, I don't hate them. I'm quite proud of them and they're fun and they look good in the frame. So I'm gathering all my materials here and you'll see a huge range of brushes. I'm not gonna be using all of these in this painting because some of them I just use for watercolor, um, but what you will see is I have these giant massive paint brushes, which I bought a couple of years back now and they are absolutely the best thing for doing fun acrylic backgrounds. You can really layer on paint super thick with them, you can move the paint around, you can create all these kind of amazing textures and kind of washy effects and swoop the paint. Uh, the main paint I'm going to be using is this Arteza Premium Watercolour Paint and it is the best acrylic paint I've ever used. So I used to use these old Croft and Black and Baldmere acrylic paints which were all I could afford for a long long time, especially back when I was a student and they were okay, they did the job that I needed them to at the time, but in recent years I've been struggling so much because you don't get good coverage with them, um, they're really inconsistent, they are quite dull and pigmented in some of the colours, they don't really have a great colour range, so I decided to invest in these Arteza paints and I feel like my artwork has stepped up incredibly since I started using them, I'm very, very happy. Now this animal painting series, as we're about to see, um, has been in the works for like a long time. So this is a really old sketchbook. I've had this sketchbook for maybe 18 months, two years now. And as you can see, as we flip all the way back to the beginning, somewhere, here we go, I had these tiny little animal doodles and animal sketches. And so I had this idea about two years ago, but I didn't really think I had the skill to pull it off then. So I've been putting it off and practicing and doing lots of different things. And I finally decided to put this into like practice and actually make paintings out of these little doodles. So you'll see a few that I've already done, like you've got the flamingo on here, the fox, uh, the bear, stuff like that. Um, I think a piglet's gonna be one of my next ones. But today I'm doing this silly little cat. Uh, please don't tell Kyra, she will hate me. So when I start my sketches like this, I just start with really basic shapes, like lots of circles and triangles and kind of just start to flesh it out from there. And um, because I'm using acrylic paints and I can paint over everything and anything and the paints are quite opaque in general, um, I don't really have to be too neat with this kind of thing. I can draw over as many times as I need and not worry about messing up. I kind of mostly focus on trying to make the, the animal sort of flow in a basic shape. Of course, this doesn't always end up, I'm still a bit off with my proportions. That's something that I'm really, really working on. And sometimes I just don't quite have the confidence in my shapes to pull it off. So you'll see things like um, on, on my fox painting, for example, he's just not quite positioned right on the page. He should have been lower. You'll notice on my bear painting, he has really weird deformed back legs, plus him or just one single back leg, it's, he looks very silly, but I love him. And you know, it's all part of the learning process and growing, so I'm getting there. And as long as I can be really, really like critical of myself, but still enjoy what I'm doing, I think that bodes well for the future. I hope, we'll see. <laughs> I don't know how many more animals I'm gonna like, I don't know, maim in the process, but we should be okay. Um, <laughs> So here I just started adding paint to the background and what is kind of interesting is with these animal paintings I tend to do the backgrounds first in terms of like putting down a sort of wash of colour. Um, in this case I went for like way more choppy colours than I normally do. Normally I kind of like I'm a little more soft with the background and I try and blend colours together a little bit more before I add details on top but with this I was like what would Kyra think of cats and I realised that she doesn't like them very much because there was once a cat who tried to like swipe at her face and like scratch her eyes and she was really scared of him and had to hide behind my legs so bless her I love her so much so I was like okay well cats would kind of be a little more messy compared to other animals and a little more aggressive so I kind of wanted to show that in the painting, which is why I kind of 
plopped these blobs of colour on a little more, I don't know, I guess heavily than I have with some of the others, but then I still wanted to tie the whole series together, which is why I took these big, kind of chunky, flat brushes that I have and started um, kind of blending the colours out and getting this like wishy washy effect, which I absolutely love. And if you go on my website and you look back at any of my acrylic paintings from the last 10 years, you'll see this is kind of, I don't want to say like a signature of my style, but it's something that has been very apparent in my work for the last decade. And it's interesting because I think you can always look at a painting and tell that it's mine because I have this quite specific style and I like that, you know, it's, I don't know, I feel like I've really been developing it over the last few years, or at least when it comes to acrylic, my like watercolour style is different, my gouache style is different and so on, but this acrylic style is something that is very kind of me and very recognisable I think, which is nice, <laughs> I, I like it. So this is why I started painting his face and you'll notice I tried to go really heavy on the texture with this so I was applying the paint really really thick um, I wanted like a really bold opaque colour but I also wanted to try and create like a fur texture with the brush, brush strokes which was really really difficult especially when you're trying to do it in a kind of circular pattern around the face so this was a bit of a challenge but I really really enjoyed doing it and I think I at least managed to pull off what was in my head again I, I still think it could be better it could always be better but for a kind of first attempt at a cat. I don't hate him, I think he's quite cute, I like him and I achieved what I set out to which is what's important I think. At this point as well I started um, applying lots of different colours and I didn't necessarily want like a smooth gradient because cats aren't really smooth in colour are they? They're, they're sort of patchy so I tried to kind of mimic this effect of like patches of different coloured fur and I was like picking up different shades of blue on the same brush and kind of applying them over each other and trying to still create this really like heavy sort of texture so if you see the painting now and once we get to the end of the video you'll see this but there's lots of impasto um, impasto impasto I, I don't know how you say the word but basically lots of texture on the painting you can see the individual brush strokes and it's I think really cool it's one of the things I love seeing in other people's paintings and one of the things I love doing in my own You'll also notice I kind of made use of it at one point where I let the face completely dry and then I took some white paint on a completely dry brush and I sort of did a dry brushing technique over it and this is something that I picked up from painting miniatures and it's where, like I say, tiny amount of paint on a dry brush and you brush it over um, an already dry surface and basically the paint is only picked up by the raised areas and it creates like a really really interesting texture where you kind of, it, it kind of highlights certain parts or I guess shades if you're using a darker colour and um, that's sort of what I did on the face and I'll, I'll point it out when we get to it but I just figured it would be interesting to talk about now but um, I feel it really helped highlight certain bits of kind of the furry texture on the face and it was something really unusual and it's not something I've ever tried in a regular acrylic painting before so it was, it was really really fun to do. Other than that, I kind of struggled down here a bit creating this sort of texture because I didn't want him to just look blobby, I wanted him to look furry, but it was a little bit difficult, but I kind of persevered and I ended up using a couple of different brushes to try and achieve this, brushes in different sizes and different shapes and in places I used like a really flat, thin brush to try and create a different texture and ultimately I think it all came together, like I say, in the way I wanted in my head, but it just took a little bit of working on, you know? At this point I started working on the kind of crazy abstract backgrounds which honestly is my favourite bit of these paintings, there's so much fun to do. I've always, and again if you look back at my paintings from the last 10 years you'll see this on my website, I've always loved kind of throwing paint around and um, kind of abstract things where I get to drip paint or splatter it or I often like kind of pull paint on paper and blow it around or use straws or a heat gun or something like that to move it and stuff and um, that's what I got to do here and I had a lot of fun with it so annoyingly I couldn't quite film this in the way that I wanted to and the camera struggled in and out of focus a little bit. Filming these videos is something that is new and difficult and I'm working on and I'm going to try and get better at and like play around with some different angles and stuff and make sure you can really see what's going on so this is something I'm aware of and trying to improve. Yeah, I had a lot of fun with this. You can do lots of different things by mixing the paint with water to different consistencies and then splattering it with a brush like this or quite literally picking up a bunch with a pipette and splatting it down 
or kind of throwing it straight from the palette to the page or like I did um, dripping it onto the page at the top and then holding the page up and letting it fall down um, and that's a really fun one because as you can see it tends to kind of follow the natural contours of your brush lines on the page so you get some really interesting effects and I just absolutely love having fun with this. As you might be able to tell, again, if you've seen my other paintings, pink and blue is one of my favourite colour combinations in paintings because I just love it, especially if it's like a bold fuchsia pink and a sort of cerulean blue. Oh, like, oh, my favourite colour combination. I love it. And that's where I thought I was going to go with this. I thought I'd do pink, blue and some white and that would be it. But then I was like, what if I do something a little bit different? And I decided to add in some green and... It was a weird choice, I didn't know if it was going to work, and I was a little bit terrified doing it, but I ended up loving the result. I think it really kind of brought this painting to life and started to make it a little bit special, a little bit different, and I'm really, really happy that I did it. There were a couple of points where, especially when I was going over some of the darker areas, I was worried that the green, I, I guess, wouldn't be opaque enough, it wouldn't be bright enough. I was thinking, should I put some white down first? But ultimately I kind of don't mind that it's a little more translucent in places. I think it kind of works well. I was really worried it would end up looking muddy but I don't think it did, especially not when you see the painting in like natural daylight. It just, it kind of works really well and I think it's a really really nice and unusual contrast to the pink and it worked a lot better than I expected it to. I also think some people are going to hate this colour combination but I'm okay with that I think. I don't mind it because I love how it turned out. And then of course I did go in with some white paint and these large flat dry brushes. And here we go, you can see on the face here I'm doing this kind of dry brushing technique and all the little raised bits of texture on the face are picking up the white paint. So not, not so much the main smudge, but if you look here what I'm doing now, uh, you're getting lots of tiny, tiny little highlights that are really, really subtle, but they just create such a different texture to anywhere else on the um, painting. And I really like how it turned out, and it's something that I want to kind of look at maybe doing in the future, and maybe creating, ev look, you can see at this point, I want to create even more textured paintings, and then do more dry brushing over it to kind of see what effects I can come up with and create. And yeah, I think it's going to be really fun. This is something I definitely want to play around with, and um, yeah, just see where it goes. So to create this like texture of really obvious, obvious brush strokes as I'm like moving the paint around like this, it's really important to make sure that the paintbrush you're using is completely dry because if you do this with a wet brush, it's going to be far too smooth for the effect that I want and you're going to end up with kind of like more washy gradients than this sort of choppy, obvious brush stroke effect sort of thing. I don't know if that makes sense. Words and stuff, you know? Anyway, then I came in with my trusty Posca pens, of which I am gaining quite the collection now because I am having so much fun with them and I just, I adore them. They're so versatile, they're really fun. Uh, they dry quickly, but not too quickly, and they just come in the most beautiful assortment of colours. So here I used a mix of a fuchsia pink one, a white one, a kind of creamy beige colour, um, and a whole bunch of other ones. And here's a fun thing about Posca pens. So you can see these zigzags I was doing here. I absolutely hated them, and I thought they looked terrible, and I was like, what the hell have I done? Like, have I just ruined my painting? But while they were still wet, I took this large brush, and I just brush them out and brush them off and smudge them and make them so they were kind of not so obvious and then just went over them and so you get kind of like still this textured background and because I did this kind of brushy effect they fit with everything else and don't look out of place and um, they don't stand out anymore and I managed to just do other interesting things over the top and ultimately I think this little area turned out looking quite well instead of the mess that it was so again the really versatile thing about acrylics because you have this open time of a couple of minutes but after that they still dry fairly quickly it means they can be really really versatile so you have time to make changes but also if something goes really wrong you can just paint over the top of it and fix your mistakes so you're not waiting days like you are with oil paints but you don't necessarily have seconds like you do with some watercolors so it can be really really versatile in that respect then I just used the Posca pens to go over my line work again and I fixed some little issues and problems that I had the first time around and um, gave him a cute little face with a little bit of personality and a cheeky little grin because he's a little monster. He's so cute. And at this point I decided to come in with some of the kind of like shapes and doodles which are kind of 
almost like a signature thing on these paintings at this point. So you have some circles, you have some swirls, you have some little flowers, some little leafy boys, you have these dotted lines, just, you know, they're, they're kind of something I've been doing in my paintings for years and I've made them this sort of feature in these animal acrylics. So you'll see these doodles I think started off in some gouache paintings and some I want to say maybe watercolour paintings, I'm not sure. Uh, but you'll see in my sketchbook there's spreads that feature all of these shapes um, that I've been kind of slowly bringing into my artwork over the last couple of years. I think one of the big turning points in kind of this art style for me was, um, God, how many years ago now? Like six years ago maybe when I went to New York with my sister. Again, if you've been on my website, you'll probably see tons of my photos from New York but one of the places that really really inspired me was Coney Island and I took these amazing photos there at sunset and just the whole place was just felt very magical and not like anywhere I'd been before and I loved all the bright colours and the rides whooshing past you and just the energy that was there and when I came back I created this series of now I think they're really terrible paintings of Coney Island and the rides and I was trying to like capture that energy in a sort of abstract style and I think over the years that style developed and I managed to kind of turn that energy into something a little bit more aesthetically pleasing like these ones but again I think it's really nice to see the progression of my art style and kind of where it's all culminated to at this point and it also makes me excited because I'm like, where is it going to go in the future? I'm trying to improve all the time. And every time I finish a piece of artwork like this, I go back and analyze it and try and figure out where I've gone wrong, where I could do better, what I would change about it in the future. And that's what I've always done with my art. And that's why I think I've seen such an improvement over the last, like, literally 10 years. So, yeah, I'm really, really excited. Um to see where I go from here and that's kind of what this channel is about for me it's about doing something for fun doing something I'm passionate about but also learning a lot in the process and trying to improve yeah hopefully it'll be fun for you to be on this journey with me but I think that is about me done for today so thank you so so much for watching we're just going to end this with a little video of Kyra judging my painting and seeing what she thinks so you'll have to excuse her today she's got a little bit of a poorly eye it's her ingrown eyelashes that are irritating her again she's had her eye drops she's going to be okay but she's just a little bit grumpy for now um but as always her opinion is the most important one to me in the entire world so let's all appreciate it <laughs> But for now, thank you for watching today. I appreciate you guys a lot. Um, if you're new here, it would be amazing if you want to subscribe. And if you don't know who I am, also go check out my main channel, please, where I post book reviews and social commentary and um, kind of educationally type stuff to make you do the thinking and things. I sound very dumb, don't I? Anyway, thank you for watching today and I'll see you again soon.